The trains first rolled into Glenwood Springs in 1887, creating easier access in the town, which in turn created a boom. This brought in all types of characters, starting with the working class, and then later, on the other side of the tracks, the wealthy. Well, Glenwood's seedier history happened uh, when it first began here um, in 1800s, the early 1800s. Carbonate uh, was a place where a big mining boom was going to happen, and that was up on the flat tops. And it brought in miners and all kinds of people. And it was supposed to be the seat for Garfield County at that time, but with the cold winters and the and stuff they they just they realized they couldn't do it up there so they brought everything down uh, to Glenwood and when they did that Glenwood started growing and it became like a tent city and along the riverfront were lots of saloons and hotels in the of course brothels because the women started coming in to service the miners and the agricultural uh, men, the farmers. Gussie Blake was the first madam in Glenwood Springs, and she was the common law wife of John Blake, who was a founding father of the town. She and John built a two-story house on the corner of Riverfront and Bennett Avenue, and that was her brothel. The red light district in, Glen in Glenwood was basically 7th Street, and that was from Cooper Avenue to up to Lookout Mountain. What happened was in 1887, when the trains came to Glenwood Springs, the trains uh, brought business and things started booming, but it also brought really uh, the scum of the earth as well. <laughs> And um, I'm not saying that prostitutes were the scum of the earth, but they did come in droves here. And so they had brothels all the way down 7th Street. You could just jump off the train and go to the brothel. What cleaned up the town was in 1916 when prohibition began here in Colorado. It was the first, it was early. Colorado started prohibition. So um, the saloons, turned from serving liquor to soft drinks and candy and stuff like that. And so that was really the decline of the prostitution in Glenwood. In 1893 is when the Hotel Colorado was being built, fashioned after a villa in Italy. And it was being built by a man by the name of Devereaux, very involved in that. They wanted to make Glenwood a resort tourist area with bringing in lots of money and amazing guests. So we believe that the hotels had an important part of the history of Glenwood from kind of picking up the pieces after the prohibition uh, to providing economic jobs and uh, revitalization to when times were tough. Uh, recently, the hotel and brew pub have been kind of the cornerstone of the redevelopment of 7th Street and Restaurant Row in Glenwood Springs. The general history of the Hotel Denver is that it was started uh, down the street in the late 1800s by a man named Art Kendrick and in 1905 uh, Henry Bosco rented the top floor of the what was then a saloon and started the Star Rooms and it's been owned by the, the, the Bosco family since 1905. Uh, we ended up acquiring it in 1991. During the uh, harder times of the Prohibition and the Great Depression, uh, the hotels basically hung on for dear life. They was not nearly as busy. It was a popular area for um, people to buy grapes for their own wineries from Mr. Bosco. Uh, where they made their own wine at home. You could do that during the Prohibition. Some of the more famous guests at the Hotel Denver include Diamond Jack, who uh, came to uh, Colorado, uh, accused, he was basically a convicted felon of kidnapping and murder. 
Uh, one of the other more famous guests of the Hotel Denver was apparently Clark, Clark Gable, the um, uh, actor from Gone with the Wind. He liked to come out in the 30s and go fishing for a week, as I understand it. The role of the hotel in the history of Glenwood Springs has been kind of a comfort area for the blue collar workers as the common man's uh, hotel to stay in. They had a, a wonderful restaurant uh, here at the hotel that everybody talks about. The hotel across the river, the Hotel Colorado, was the luxurious hotel and the common folk really didn't feel comfortable there uh, or could afford it. Uh, that's the biggest role of the Hotel Denver in the, the history. We think the Hotel Denver is still kind of the common folk place that uh, my wife April's done a wonderful job of converting the hotel into a boutique hotel uh, that is very comfortable for people, but not so ritzy that uh, you, you feel uncomfortable. The hotel is a 68 room boutique hotel. At one time during its heyday, it was 100 rooms, but we've slowly uh, converted it to where it's down to 68 rooms. We consider them boutique rooms. A lot of them look like the lobby here in the atrium. They have exposed bricks in the rooms. We have exposed ceilings in the rooms, uh, quilts, hardwood floors. Uh, we have a 5,000 square foot meeting room, basically a full service hotel. So if the wall behind me could talk, I believe that it would say, be humble, you can live through everything. I've watched Prohibition, I've watched movie stars, I've watched gangsters, immigrant struggles, a shooting or two, Prohibition, and survivability.